Learning by Doing presents The Mad Dash. Watch us every Tuesday morning on YouTube. Join me and multiple crew members as I take our Crowley catamaran from Sydney, Australia all the way up around the top to Lombok in Indonesia. Made possible by our patrons. Thank you very much, you guys, and also our sponsors here on board for this trip. Thanks so much, guys. You can also follow us along on Marine Traffic or Vessel Finder. Trade Runner is the name. Right, guys, good day. It is day. Good evening. Good night. It's just after midnight. It's uh, not quite one o'clock yet. And the plan was to leave here, Scarborough Marina, at two o'clock, but... I couldn't sleep. I wasn't. Uh, you know, I went to bed at ten. Haven't slept a wink. I heard we were moving around, so I was just like a bugger. Let's just go. Doesn't make much difference. We've got a passage of uh, nearly a hundred miles to do today, so the earlier we go, the earlier we get there. So yeah, we're in the marina. Uh, I'm just getting the ropes off now. About to start the engines up and get out of here. I'll get back to you more when it's a bit lighter. You can't see much now. It's a bit boring. Anyway, we'll get cranking. All the ropes free? Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right, it's uh, about 3.30 in the morning now, and uh, we were just motoring along waiting for this wind to fill in, and then the port side engine just died, and uh, we started drifting off sideways, and yeah, it took me a while to figure out. At first I thought it was an engine problem, and uh, I went and checked it, and while well, the oil was low, and I was like, oh, hopefully the engine hasn't seized, but I put a socket set on the end of the, uh, engine and obviously that still turns so then I went and looked all around the boat and um, yeah while I was doing that I told we were to just keep driving with one engine offshore just to get away because we we're only a couple hundred meters from the beach and he couldn't do it the boat kept turning around so then obviously yeah we're stuck to something and I uh, found a yeah bloody fisherman he ran over something or other it's stuck in the port side rudder and prop so I'm gonna have to go in the water I'm not really stoked about that but anyway I'll show you this Part. Okay. Go ahead. Check the steering. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's yes, okay. Okay. We need to move now. 
Uh, it's a drive now. Did you get close back? to the beach? Oh, okay, as you can hear, we're underway again. Um, don't know what you saw about that, but yeah, there was a big, I don't know if it's a long line or a fishing net or something, but thick nylon rope, two or three boys. It wasn't a net, I think it was something else. It wasn't a shark uh, line either. But yeah, it wrapped five or six times around the prop and killed the engine. And then it had gone around the rudder as well. That's why we had no steerage. Uh, no big drama. Water wasn't too cold. We've well, got hot water now because we've been motoring. I can go and have a quick shower. But first time that's happened at night time. In Indo, I had to jump in the water a couple of times because we got tangled in a fishing net. But first time at night, and it's definitely less fun to go in the water at night. But, I mean, it wasn't a big drama in the end. It's just confusing at night because you're like, well, where are we? Are we drifting towards the beach? But it turns out we were sort of anchored on this rope. So it wasn't a big drama and there was no current. I just jumped in the water, took two, three minutes. No big deal. Moving on. Well, it's a beautiful morning. Sun just came up a little while ago. Feeling pretty tired actually. Didn't sleep, yeah, at all really. Um, but we did leave early. Well, we left because neither of us was sleeping, so we didn't get any sleep at all, and we just slept. I had some, I probably had a couple of, well, a couple of hours now, nearly. Um, you know, like four half hour little naps, I think. But now it's just got the screecher up and turned the engines off which is nice because we've been motoring for, I think, three, four hours before that. Uh, just no wind at all. Now we've got about, how much wind do we have? Oh, he's on his deaf side, he can't hear me. He's deaf in one ear and if his other ear's on the, <laughs> he's got a hearing aid and uh, if it's on the other side, the wind blocks out any sound anyway, so he can't hear me. So I've got to literally go and tap him. But anyway, I think we have around 10, 11 knots of wind from uh, weirdly from the opposite side it sh should be but uh, it's sort of coming from the south west whereas it should be coming from the southeast but that's all right um, it's probably just the land breeze and it'll turn around sometime today anyway it doesn't matter it's coming from somewhere behind and that's really important because as we don't have a mainsail uh, we only have the the head sails so we need the wind to be preferably after the beam which it is right now and yeah we're doing six knots it's all right and it's pretty calm and it's all right and uh we've got about 50 miles to go <sighs> i think jumping in the water earlier made me really tired just just having to get changed and all that sort of stress um of of what's going on what's going on and it's dark and then you know getting geared up getting in the water the adrenaline i guess it was adrenaline not stress just uh you know gotta gotta figure out what's going on gotta sort the situation hopefully nothing's broken and then after that you sort of have a bit of a come down period and i think that's sort of what i'm having now just pretty tired but yeah we're um finished our Back there, it was just around uh, shipping channel, the main shipping channel into Brisbane Harbour. Uh, we had a cruise ship go by us in the night, pretty close, and you sort of, you've got to cross it twice, the shipping channel. So we don't have a plotter, radar, or AIS at the moment. So it was eyes, eyes only. So we're out of that now, we're past that. We're just on a straight run now up to, um, up to the point where we're, we're gonna turn into well i guess it's double island point um we're going up to there and so it's much easier now should be no more ships around and we can just cruise on up it'll be a mellow uh, rest of the day we should get up there well definitely before night time <laughs> but we're not exactly racing so it'll probably be another eight or ten hours yet here's what it is if we get there after sunset well we're just going to have to anchor out in a rolly anchorage because we ain't getting in all right so we're two thirds done now. We've got this is my chart plotter. We've uh, got 30 miles to go. Um, we actually started speeding up a bit now. 
Uh, as you see, I've got um, both my sails, no main obviously, but both of the head sails uh, out wing on wing. And that's quite a bit of sail area actually, because the screech is 57 or something square meters and the jib is 38. So it's quite a bit of, quite a bit of sail area. Uh, obviously, if I had the main and the screech, I'd have another 20 more than that, but um, this is still quite good. And it's consistently right behind us when I run. So sort of we've got 10 to 12 knots of true, and we're doing six to seven knots of boat speed. And uh, it's pretty comfortable. I'm not, a, not thinking this wind will stay like this for the rest of the trip. It'll probably go out this side a bit, and I'll just have to go back to the screecher on one side but um anyway we'll take this when we can get it it looks like we'll get there before dark which is the main the main thing uh, i don't want to have to run the engines if i don't have to but yeah we're doing we're doing okay this is all we can really hope for without a mainsail just down when running or you know 20 knots on the beam would be 20 knots at 120 would be good too but um this is awesome actually this is really good we'll take it we'll take it Right, we're approaching Double Island Point. Um, well, we've come around Double Island Point. We're approaching the lagoon. Uh, I hope to be able to get the drone up for you. Well, for you and for me, so you can see where it goes, where we go in through the uh, little sand entrance, but also so I can see where the sand entrance is. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but the thing is, it's just a squall coming and it's starting to rain. So I don't know if I'm going to fly my brand new one-day-old drone in a in a squall. And it's a mini as well, like the tiniest little drone ever. It weighs about as much as a fingernail, so I don't know if I'll do that, but yeah, we'll get a bit closer and see. So the Double Island Point Lagoon is this, basically the sandbar that's just formed through natural processes, storms and tides and whatnot. And it's just sort of crept along about 100 metres out from the shore and just made this perfect lagoon. And it's about two, three metres deep inside, enough room for most monohulls and certainly all cats. And um, it's just made this amazing location that, that wasn't there before. Um, you know, it's just a perfect anchorage now. It's like a host holiday destination in its own right. So as we came up here, there was a few um, monos anchored outside. I'm not sure what the tide was actually, but I was pretty confident I could get in with my rudders up and the dagger boards up. So I just sort of went for it. Um, a couple of pictures here you see I shot with the drone the next day. Yeah, we just sort of crept in um, quite slowly and uh, amazing, amazing place. I'm really, really stoked that I could get in there. It was a good day? Long day. Yeah, started off at 1 a.m. Now it's, uh, it's already 4.20. 4.20? That's a good uh, time. That's uh, 12, 15 hours. Yeah. 15 hours of traveling. I thought it, it would have taken um, 14 hours is what I planned yeah. but we had ins and outs with wind and we probably motored at least half well, two thirds two thirds we had a motor on yeah we motor sailed the last three four, three hours and I guess we sailed properly the middle six or seven yeah. and then motored the first three or four again yeah it wasn't great but uh we are a bit hampered with it. We don't have a mainsail, but it was that wouldn't have really changed it actually. To be honest, we just didn't really get much wind at all. But it was pretty calm, and apart from the nighttime action with the fishing uh, rope around the prop, everything else was pretty okay. okay. You learn some learn some new skills. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. show me show me your uh, show me your knots. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> come on show me come on, that's so, so he, he told me he knows he knows it's the so knots so and then I said okay that. and then he <laughs> tries them and he didn't know but now he knows I told him to do 10 of each 10 of each and I think he knows the bowline and a clove hitch now <laughs> and he also knows the, the granny knot and the uh, monkey bun fist knot that you can't undo anymore 
But you're learning, huh? Learning by doing. I have to, have to. No choice. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was okay. And now we're anchored up nicely in this uh, beautiful natural lagoon. I've never been here before. Um, well, it was never here. It was here when we came down last year, but we didn't stop here. We were just flat out trying to get to Brisbane for Christmas. But uh, before that, it wasn't here. There was nothing. And so this will show you, um, I'll show you when the rain stops or maybe tomorrow I'll fly the drone. I'll show you this beautiful lagoon and it's just formed by this sandbar that's formed and yeah years ago there was there was nothing it was just a big bay and i anchored in this bay years ago in my first boat and it was a terrible rolly anchorage you had to put out a stern anchor to hold you into the swell and because the wind comes from this way and the swell comes from that way and it's a terrible anchorage but it's a place you sort of had to stay to wait for the tide or the morning to go over the wide bay bar but now there's beautiful lagoon in here people just come here to stay here they don't even go any further they just stay here and then go back to brisbane beautiful place to surf off the end of the beach fishing a big sandbar to walk along amazing and it's closing up again um the the entrance is getting narrower and narrower it's really just at the end of the beach as you could see when we came in it's only about 50 meters wide and two meters deep now so maybe by you know a few more months or another big storm or something it'll be closed and it'll just be a bit of a lake in here that you can't get into with a boat anymore um, pretty cool natural phenomenon, but I'm stoked that we could come here and witness it. We'll stay here a couple of days probably and relax now. Um, there's a little, uh, these guys behind us. These guys are called, that boat's called Shining Light, and it's, uh, uh, they have a YouTube channel called Sailing with the Jameses. They just bought this, it's also a Crowther, same as ours, but about as different a Crowther as you could get. That's a 50 foot aluminium one, and it's about 20 something tons, very heavy and they are saying it's very slow. Uh, they've only had it for about a month, that boat, but they're not very impressed with its speeds. But I'll probably go over and see them tomorrow. But um, yeah, I'll get back and finish off this video with some good drone footage, hopefully here. Maybe, you know, we'll get a good sunset. This, this squall might roll over and we'll get some uh, nice storm light at the end of the day and I'll fly the drone and show you this and finish off the video. Come on, come here, bud.